Welcome to a very special edition of Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. I'm dressed a bit differently today because not only honoring my Cuban heritage, but to honor all Latinos in the music industry. Today, we honor a Mexican living legend. His name is Javier Patis. Patis was born in Tijuana, Mexico, and still lives in his childhood home. Now 78 years old, he is considered a pioneer and living legend in Mexico. Javier began playing guitar at 12 years old and always believed divine intervention led him to playing guitar. In 1957, he founded a group called Los TJs, with which he picked up musical influences that were received from the Mexican border cities. People like T-Bone Walker, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Chuck Berry, Howlin Wolf, James Brown, among others. Javier Patis is very proud of the role he played in bringing American blues music to Mexico. His own playing in bands and as a solo artist brought a great awareness to the blues south of the American border. But more than that, he's created opportunities that brought legendary performers to Mexico for the first time, such as Ray Charles and Little Richard. Perhaps even more meaningful to Javier is the time he dedicates to young musicians to teach them the art of music making. Over the years, he taught and inspired a host of well-known musicians including the legendary Carlos Santana, whom Javier began playing with back in 1958. He even designed his own style of electric guitar, which he still often plays on stage. One day back in the late 50s, Santana's mother watched the 16-year-old Javier play guitar on stage with his band in Tijuana and asked him to teach her son Carlos to play. The young Carlos Santana then began spending all his spare time hanging with Javier and other members of the TJs. As Santana's skills quickly improved, he too began to play in the bars of Tijuana. 1963, Carlos moved from Tijuana to San Francisco with his family to join his father. In just a few years, with everything he learned from Batis and playing long nights in the cantinas and strip clubs, Santana was formed. After playing at Woodstock, the whole world was exposed to this unique sound born in the streets of Tijuana and cultivated by Javier Batis. In the mid-60s, Javier put together the famous Finks in Mexico City. The band recorded possibly the first Mexican rock album recorded entirely in English. By 1968, Javier Batis became a famous figure in the world of blues in Mexico and was hired to play at the Terraza Casino Bar. Personalities from all walks of life gathered every night to impressive crowds, including politicians, artists, and intellectuals. That popularity led him to perform in 1968 at the first massive outdoor concert in Mexico, held by authorities of then a Department of the Federal District in the Alameda Central, and where, according to eyewitnesses' calculations, Javier played before an audience of at least 18,000 people. 1969, Jim Morrison and the Doors appeared in Mexico. At the end of the concerts, a lonely Morrison fled to other bars in Mexico City. The Casino Terrace was one of them. Javier Batiz played there every night. We were friends. We knew each other since 1967 at a place called Whiskey A Go-Go in Hollywood, California, recalls Batiz. It was not strange then. He visited him at the Terraza Casino where Batiz played every night from 12 at night until 5 in the morning. Morrison would arrive after a show at 1 or 1.30 in the morning. He would walk two or three blocks. Uh, the two places were on the same avenue to see me play, says Batiste. He would get very drunk, and I would play. For Batiste, Morrison's present meant nothing more than the visit of a friend. At that time, we were all the same. The superstars were others, and the musicians were musicians and nothing more. For this reason, he says, being friends with great artists, with great and good musicians, was not an extraordinary thing. In the year 2000, the legendary Mexican guitarist participated in Can Heat's Disco Boogie 2000 with the theme, The World of Make Believe, a song that took the first place in Europe, which earned him to travel with Can Heat on tour all over Italy. Longtime drummer for the classic Heat lineup, Fido de la Parra, who we interviewed recently, has been friends with Javier for many, many years and has helped to promote Javier in the U.S. whenever he can. In 2008, he released the album El Brujo, USA, as well as the presentation of the documentary made in Mexico by Fito de la Parra in the United States and presentations in Santa Ana, California, at Whiskey A Go-Go, as well as the Blues Fest Festival. 
also in his book, The Flight of the Angel. In 2016, he traveled to the city of Chicago to play with Buddy Guy in his place, The Legends. Javier Patis has released dozens of albums, singles, and compilations, and an incredible music career that has spanned over 65 years. His talents include blues, rock, jazz, Latin, world, world music, and even progressive rock. There's no genre that Javier cannot play and perform. Although Javier is considered a music legend in his native Mexico, he has not been recognized for his incredible talents here in the U.S., and that is a tragedy. Carlos Santana got his breaks with the likes of Bill Graham, basically performing Javier's legendary guitar licks. Maybe Carlos should help his old mentor out. One of my favorite Javier Batis albums is one he recorded in 2017 with another Mexican legend, composer, pianist, drummer, trumpeter, and a vocalist, Tino Contreras, the music known as Mexico's, a musician known as Mexico's father of modern jazz. The album is called Tino Contreras and Javier Batis, Live Sessions. Contreras passed away recently at the age of 97 years old. Here's my interview with Mexican guitar living legend, who is solely responsible for bringing American blues and rock and roll to Mexico and hopefully one day soon be equally recognized for his musical attributions here in the U.S., the great Javier Batis. Hello, hello, Ray. Hey, I'm so happy to be here uh, in your interviews because I've, I've read that all of the people you have interviewed, and man, I'm, I'm right there in the, in, the, in the bunch, so I'm very happy and very grateful uh, because you know in Mexico, I I I have played against all odds. I mean, uh, I brought the the music, the blues music, which was prohibited when I started playing in Mexico in 1963. The music that I played was prohibited in the United States. So the American people, I, I became hugely famous. And the American people, because of the American people that went to see me in Mexico, to hear the music that they haven't heard before, you know. Never heard the music from Muddy Waters or Sonny Way Wilson or even B.B. King or, the, you know, the, the good ones, the big ones. And so I started singing and playing the music. They thought that I was writing it or where, where was it coming from? Of course... It was coming from the records uh, that I bought in, in San Diego, in Market Street. Um, and, and so when I started playing over there, all the musicians, the music. There's a, a video on YouTube from Javier Batis, Hey Girl, uh, the song Hey Girl. Mm -hmm. Before it starts, it, it's a legend. It says, it's a, a writing, you no, know, it says, before... Before Javier came, 1963, he came, and the music changed forever in Mexico country, in the country of Mexico. So I have been, I have been a, a rock, I have been a, a pillar, you know, for, for the musicians in Mexico. That's why Pito de la Parra, Santana, and the La Barreda, La Boriel, all these, all these beautiful people. They have made it in the United States. They, they before they made it over there, they had they had to play with me. And learn what I know. What I still <laughs> teach. Tonight, I'll be teaching the new crowd. Seven o'clock from seven tonight. I, I teach the, the young kids, and I I got I guarantee you that you know all these kids that are learning with me right now are, are gonna be. Not as famous because to be famous you need to work such such a way, but they're gonna be good or just as good or maybe better than the people that you know, because I still play like I played when in 1957 that I started, but now I play better because I haven't lost my touch, I haven't lost my mind. <laughs> You know, I haven't gone. I haven't gone through drugs, right. or, or I haven't gone through through illnesses. I haven't. Mm -hmm. I'm not sick. The the sick that I get, maybe a little cold, uh, you know, uh, a little cough or something. 
but I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not a sickly guy, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 78 years old. Right? So, man, oh man, you look great, man. I look, I look like, I, I thank you very much. I was saying I look like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the young version of I, you. I, I have, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Older version. I, like um, I, I, I have a, a huge, a very well developed sense of humor mm -hmm. uh, because of all all the all the bricks and stones and and all, all the rocks and stuff that I have been able to cross to get to where I'm going. I still haven't got there. And so I I learned how to bring, you know, jump over them and get around them. I, all all the bad stuff, all the bad bad stuff. I I say it with a with a laughter. You know, it, it's funny that only two Mexicans played it in, in Woodstock, and both of them came out of my group. <laughs> What's the deal with that? I know. I gotta. I gotta ask you, man. Do you have any regrets teaching Carlos Santana? Because oh. you would have been the Carlos Santana in America if you didn't. Yeah. Right. No. no uh huh. Even even the Jimi Hendrix man. You know, Alan came yeah. to my house in Coyoacan in Mexico. Right. He came with he came with a with a bunch of money to bring me over to New York. The next day to follow Hendrix's uh, tour, mm -hmm. but you know, you know, I didn't go. I didn't accept the offer because just imagine, man, you're going to 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 the in New York to the big part. Of, I don't I can't remember the name. Uh, you go there, you expect it to Jimmy Hendrix, the monster coming out. And there comes a little guy with really skinny and, and no hair and playing the guitar. A really good guitar. I mean, you know, I have I haven't learned my my fame just by by being there. You know, no, I play really good, but not as good as Hendrix. And the people wanted to see Hendrix. I didn't want to go a second or third base. You know, I, right? Yeah, I didn't want to fill that that gap. And for Carlos, God bless him. Man, he's a a real, a real, a real, real good friend of mine, and I love him so much. And he, he's been through some shit too. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been through, through some stuff too, and and so he made his money and his fame. And that's what you do if you go over there. That's what you want to do, you know. I like fame, I like money, but I want to make it in my country, and that's what it's been my whole, right. my whole life, you know. Mi, mi México tiene que tener la música, you know? mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so I'm staying here, hoping and praying. The time is getting short, but I still am playing like a mother. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it. That's okay. <laughs> but uh, I play like nobody else is playing, man. You know, nobody. When I play with 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 uh, with the uh, uh, with the legend in Chicago, yeah, they all got surprised. Who are you? Where do you come from? Uh, where, where do you play? You know, because I don't play too much in the United States. I don't play that much. I wish I could. Yeah, that's that's a shame, though. You know, I, know. I wish I would. Yeah, it's and it's a shame for the for the. And I'm sorry to say this. I, I'm, I, I'm just saying that the white people don't know me, man. You know, a lot of brown people know me, but no, 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 no. I mean, a couple of good friends, you know, mm -hmm. and and you know, but nobody knows about me, man. And that's a shame because I I I want to play. It's your music that I'm playing. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you know, you've been so good for so long, man, since the late 50s. Your music, even in the late 50s, was fantastic, you know? 
Yeah, You're incredible, dude. <laughs> Here I am in my, in, my, in, my, in my room, in my, you know, in the, this is the house I was born in. Really? Yeah. That's cool. This is the house I was born in. So it's a real, a real house of blues. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see my house, and you can, you can actually see John Lee Cooking walking out. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. You you know what makes me mad? What makes me mad is there's bands like Malo, you know, and El Chicano who got big hit in the United States, yeah. but not you. You know that makes me upset. That makes me upset. That's why I wanted Skip uh, Taylor, you know, to 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 build me up, you know, to 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 punch me in, you know. That's right. Uh, but you know, he 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 already has uh, made his life. He already is retired. Yep. You know what? I know rock and roll from no way. <laughs> I think. I'm going to promote the hell out of you, man. <laughs> you know what I need? What I need is another another Bill Graham. Right. Yeah, he got Carlos. Yeah. He, I was with my wife, and she brought Carlos over to me, and he. He told Carlos in front of me, he said, Carlos, be careful with this guy because he plays like you or mm -hmm. better than you. And you know, he sings, he said. <laughs> and you know, the best part, he said, he has his own hair. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got it. Yeah, it's white now. Doesn't matter. Did, um, when you heard Carlos play, you must hear a lot of the riffs that you, that come from you. Did you suggest anything to him? Are there songs that you told him to, you know? I have, you know what I have? I have something that God gave me. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave it to me. God gave me this, this bass line, and he gave me this pentatonic scale that I didn't learn from nowhere. You know, I started playing it. And that's been my number one lesson. <laughs> no. The only lesson I teach my guitar players. And with that, I started Carlos. I taught him that on a Sunday night. And his mother came him came in my house to, to take him, you know, home at about eleven o'clock at night. And the next day, the, he, she brought him over about four o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And she told me, Javier, my son didn't speak because of you. <laughs> 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 and I said, okay, I'm sorry, senora. I told, I told her. And then I, I, Carlos came in, to, took Carlos' guitar, and I said, what did you learn? He said, I learned this. to <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing when he came the thing that I taught him he already made about 20 to 40 riffs from that man he was such a he is such a genius man. he's one of the best guitarists in the world yeah yeah he is and, and, it, and it, it's because he started with me otherwise <laughs> <laughs> Where, where are you right now? Are you in Tijuana? I, I'm in Tijuana, the house I was born. Right. Uh, I was I was born in this house, and then my little sister was born four or five years uh, after me, and she's one of my. No, she's the best blues singer in Mexico. Really. And I am the best and only yeah, and the best and only guitar blues guitarist in Mexico. And I am the mythological, uh, legendary guitarista mexicano de Tijuana. And uh, yeah, I, they get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. You know what, what would be really good for me if we made some more, more interviews like this one so that people get to know me somehow? Yes, I agree. Yeah. I'll spread the word, man. I will spread yeah. the word. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we, we got a poor Mexican in Tijuana. Let's give us some help. 
All right, I want to mention the Tino Contreras and Javier Batiste live sessions. It was fantastic. That was one of my favorite albums, okay? All right, thank you so much. Incredible, man. You are so talented. Yeah, um, thank you. I'm going to mention some of the tracks on the album. First of all, you started out with Big Boy. You got Big Boy, which is a uh, kind of a swing music, 50s early rock and roll feel, which you really, you really shine on that. I, on that song. I, I wrote that because I, I write some music for some for some picture for movies, movie, right. you know, movies. Right. It's, so they, they, they uh, asked me to write some music for a movie that was called the Viento Distante, the mm -hmm. distant wind, okay. So I wrote another song, it was called Martians Go Home. But, it, but after I wrote that one, I wrote another one that's called Big Girl. And after I wrote that one, I wrote Big Boy, you know, <laughs> you know a big girl, a big boy. <laughs> and, yeah, and so I got nominated in Austria for uh, for music for the movie theaters, you know. Mm -hmm. So I won ten thousand dollars in a gold leader. Oh, yeah. But the but the, pro but the producer of my music in Mexico thought it was too good for me, so he kept everything. Oh God, what is man? <laughs> it's a so I, 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 and I and I laugh about it. It's no laughing matter, but I have to laugh about it because if I cry, then in, in this moment I'll die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if I if I cry about all the bad things they have done to me on my recordings, on my movies, my concerts, and my everything has gone sour. And thank God. I have a wife that, that that helps me make it through the night, you know. Right. 32 years we've been married, so... Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So it's going serious. Is she, is she your manager now? Does she take care of... Listen, she sings with my group. She plays the drums. Right. Yeah, she, she manages the group. Good. She drives... She, listen... She drives the truck, man. I mean, come on. That's great. <laughs> you know, because in the positions that we're in in Mexico, playing the music that we play, yeah. we don't get that many gigs, you know. Yeah. So we, every time we get something, we got to have to take care of it, you know. Right. She, she plays the guitar. She writes the... Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. And still, yeah. here we are, you know. Incredible. Thanking, thanking God for everything that we have. Nothing is needed to us. Everything yeah. counts. And, and thank God we have it, you know. I'm going to promote the hell out of this album, man. Because this album, to me, is like Grammy worthy. That's how good it is. And the people in the United States need to, to hear this. Okay? Thank you very much. The, 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 the second track, how do you pronounce that? Horico Jazz? How do, you, how do you pronounce that? Uh, I don't know. Horico Ho Jazz? Who wrote that? No, or I? I think it was you. You, you sound you and, you sound like you got that Carlos Santana teachings okay. in that tune, and it's got great bass work. I mean, let me let me get my my my. It's the second track on the album. That's it. Uh, let me get it. Claudia heard, and she's. She's getting the album. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, good guys are yours, man. It's a fantastic album, man. Yeah, you man. Got other tracks, Carlitos Ways. Uh, ah, that's mine. That's I, mine. I love it. I love Carlitos it. Carlitos Ways. Carlitos Way, I love yeah. it. And it doesn't have to do anything with Carlitos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, my wife, my my daughter is is named. Carlina, like Carlina, like Carlos, you know? Right. And so, because when I was playing at the Cowboy Club in Tijuana, I used to sing Stand By Me, the song. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, a couple of guys from Los Angeles, Mexican guys, used to come down and hear us play. And one day, one of them, they were brothers, and one of the brothers called me and said, Javier, 
I'll give you a song if you let us sing background vocals on Stand By Me. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know the song. It don't have no background vocals. You know? Stand by me. You know? Yeah, that's right. They're not on the record. And so I started playing, and then they gave me the song Charlena mm -hmm. that I got and put the name of the song to my daughter. Okay? And by, by to, to my great blessing that I have, before, of course, but before he died, Benny King mm -hmm. put the background vocals on he, when he played on live TV, man. Wow. My background vocals. Mm. So I have, I have gone to different of, of the world with my music, but nobody knows who I am or where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some other uh, tracks I love on the album. The Jazz Turco, which is incredible. It's got you know elements of fusion, rock, psychedelia, jazz, progressive rock. I mean, that's, that's a great tune. It's got, it's got everything. Well, uh, you know, Tino, Tino, Tino was the best drummer in Mexico. It's fantastic. I, when yeah. I, uh, in 1963, I went to Mexico. Tino Contreras was playing at what they used to call jazz clubs, jazz right. cafes. Yeah. All right? The jazz that were played went like this. Right. That was jazz. And I, I told them, you know, I showed them how to play Boogie Blues. And they, all the cafes closed, they became rock cafes, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But Tino still loved me, and this, this, this album we made was three or four months before he died, man. Yeah, that's a yeah. shame. It's a shame. But listen, he, at this, when he recorded this, it was 94. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great album, man. It's a classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, it is a classic. One of my classics, yes, sir. Yeah. Thank, thank like, you so um, much for letting me meet you, man. I yeah, mean, man. This is so great. I yeah, wish you were there. there. You know, I have to come see you in Tijuana. <laughs> yes, that would be the greatest thing, man. Because could you hear me with my group that I have here in Tijuana? Oh, I love so, it. All, all of them are are studying yeah, me how to how to play. So there are a bunch of kids. Uh, all this is twenty two, I think. And and so there are a bunch of kids like when I used to play, you know, at sixteen, mm -hmm. seventeen. Yep. I started playing at 12. That's like I played today. I played at 12. I play better today, of course. Of course. But I played really good when I was 12, so that's why I became really famous, real famous. I, and, I, I pay you to teach me, man, because I, I play guitar, but I get frustrated, you know? Oh, no, I don't let people to get frustrated with yeah. me. I guarantee my my teaching will make you pay. Let's see, you know what it is? It's only five notes. Yeah. It's a sonic scale. Right. See, so God gave it to me, and I give it to you. Right. You know, that's what right. it is. I'd love to have you teach me, man. That'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't put a price on that. Oh, no. That's what I say. <laughs> that's what I tell everybody. Come here, you should be rich. Yeah, I should. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure, but that, that but my, my, my lessons, you know, I, mean, I, I accept the money because of the electricity. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know how much you pay for, for, for electricity here in Mexico? How much? And, uh, much. <laughs> well, what's an average bill, a monthly bill? Oh, to, uh, here where we live and with my studio, about 5,000 pesos. Yeah. Which is a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other songs on the album I just want to mention. Um, the Sweet, the, the, the Day, Los 
Ojos grandes y ocho rojo. Oh! That's a great I'm gonna song. Got to tell you about that song. Yeah. I wrote it in 1970. Really? In 1970. And, uh, there was a guy, uh, there was a girl that, that we used to see. And I have to say this. I have to. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a bad uh, spoken person, but I have to tell you how I was born. He was born La Mujer de las Nalgas Grandes, which means La Mujer with a Big Ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. how, how he was born. He yeah. was born like that. <laughs> then the other part, the best the the okay. part, the best part was born, Pucho Rojo was born from from, uh, from my bass player at the time he just passed away. Right, right. And uh, he came and he says, Javier, look look what I what I got for you. He says, boom, 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 Ah, Menu, he, his name was Menu. And, oh, that's beautiful. I went, and, and, we, and it got together and, and Ocho Rojo was born. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you about Ocho Rojo. There was a guy in Mexico in the late 60s. His name was X2 Green. Mm -hmm. It was Verde. So he said that by this time, he thought that he was going to leave. Uh, uh, he said that by this time, these years, we all was, we're going to be number, letter, a color. You know, un color, un, un color, un numero, y, y, uh, y, uh -huh. and, and so he gave me a no blanco, a one white, and I and I dress white <laughs> every day. I play, I put on a white, white clothes, whatever they are. T shirt, yeah. And so I am a uno blanco. <laughs> you know, so so Menio was M ocho rojo. You know, M ocho rojo. That was his name. So that's why I put. Ocho Rojo on, 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 on his part, you know. Very cool. I still remember him being one of the best bass players that played with me. He was really good friends with Carlos, mm -hmm. and he was my little brother, and I, I taught him how to play, of course, and, and we got being really good friends. We were neighbors, and uh, but he passed away, you know. He got cancer, and yeah. not, not, nobody can stop that. I have to say one thing, man. Now that I remember, they are fighting to get the stupid rocket over the moon or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're not taking care of people in the world who, uh, yeah. who are, you know, yeah. why do they want to send rockets over the, the moon when you got people dying of cancer, little boys, little girls. I know, I know. And, 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 and grandmas, you know, grandma, I mean, I'm mad, you know. Let the rocket explode and, and, and get to work on a on a on a crew for cancer, you know. See, you, know like Fito, that. you know what Fito told me? He took some friends to Mexico City and he was so proud he didn't see any homelessness. You know, people living off the streets like he did in California. And he was he was proud of that fact. You know, here it's ridiculous, man. If you go to a place called Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia, the heroin addicts, man. Oh my God, it's horrible. I don't know. Yeah, because they don't invite you. So. <laughs> 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 oh no, no. no. <laughs> but they have to stay. You know. I make you. I make you laugh. Yeah, right? you do. <laughs> I. I. I I, you see, it's my, my sense of humor. I make people laugh. Like when, when, I, when I play with, with Buddy Guy in Chicago, yeah. Yeah. all the people were there, yeah. they were asking who I was. And where. I said, listen, I'm 72, and I have all of my teeth. And they applauded, and all of my teeth, you know. Yeah. They applauded. 
What? And I said, yeah, the little box in my nuts. Fico <laughs> <laughs> told me this was going to be a great interview. <laughs> oh, Fico's a cool guy. Word. I like Fico. <laughs> oh, Fico is my best friend that I have. He's awesome. In the music business. Yeah. He has tried to help me ever since he yeah. left my group. He left a big hole in the group, you know. Yeah. And he went to the States and he once he has made a record with me and then, then recorded with me, took me to Italy. And then a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago, he did a concert, and he's planning to make some more concerts. And I'm so grateful. You know, somebody wants to help me. I'm grateful for the help because I need a lot. Yeah, you did. But you know, yeah. you don't think you could have been like Fito and, and have joined an American rock band and be their guitarist? Yes, but I, but I was... You didn't want to do that. I'm sure that yeah, I want to do that, yeah. and especially... Sure, because right now I'm saying, hey, I still haven't made it, you know, the, the way I want to. Yeah. So now I'm ready to, to fly, man. Yeah, man. And I'm, I'm asking, you know, please help me fly from here, yeah. you know. I love my country. You deserve I've it. I've done so much for my country. Yes, sir. That's you know the other album? No. The other album I really love. Um, House of the Rising Sun. You did a great version of that oh. tune. Oh. And you got some good music oh. on that on that album too. Yeah, I like I like the album was gonna be called uh Bailando con la Luna, which is one of right. the other songs. Yep. And, and then let the, me tell you this story, man, because <laughs> because because I stopped I stopped I stopped uh uh, recording the nine, so nine songs, so the 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 engineer Angel, his name was Angel, is Angel, and he said, my Maestro, he said, uh, you have another song because we got nine, they should be ten. I said, no, I don't have any songs. And then I remember in in my suit, in my suitcase, in my guitar case, I carry a lot of le 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 words. And music mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. I said, let me see if I can if I can find some. So I I I, I saw the house of the Russian sons. And I showed it to him. He says, let's try it. Everybody just kept the instrument. We had stopped already, you know. He says, let, let's try that one. Yeah, okay. Pull the people in. So he brought the people in again. And they, they connected again, and, and you know, I started <laughs> the drums and everything. And I said, Muchachos, we're going to try this song and let's see how it comes out. And everybody said, Yeah, yeah. But we were hot mm -hmm. because we, we recorded, you see, all the work that, that's done on the record. We have recorded really bad, you know. And so, with, and without rehearsing and everything, without Without making sound check, with, with nothing, I went to the to the to the booth, the sound booth, and I started. Alum, lugar, you know, en la ciudad. <laughs> the drums, and then we started playing, and then the song came out. And Angel, the engineer, went into my booth and he said, "Okay, maestro, ya quedó." That means it's in. The first take. Mm -hmm. It was on the first take. You could hear the little things, you know. It was only one take. No rehearsal. No sound check. Nothing. It came out like a, like a big production number. But I still, I still didn't get over it, man. You know, it's been some years now. But now... Because every show with that song, because the people, La Casa de Sol, La Sierra, they want to hear it. They want to hear it, man. So, so black. All, all they have helped me, has kept me going. Right. It's knowing all the blessings I have. Like I, this, like with you, it's a 
huge blessing to be talking to you. Javier, has, has Eric Burton heard that song, your, your take? Fito de la Parra told me this. Okay. Eric heard it, and he says, hey, they're, they're being singing. So I'm going to sing again. And he started singing again with his group, <laughs> which is a, a great story, man. Yeah, I know Eric's uh, PR people and his wife. So if, if, he, if he hasn't heard, I was going to send it to him. Uh, <laughs> be, sure to, be sure to hit the low, the low note. <laughs> <laughs> the, the um the song on the album be my baby you know the ronette song who sang yeah. that who sang that on your album my little sister no no baby, my little sister oh, she was oh, great. she's greatest i told you she's the greatest singer in mexico fantastic man, man. and she's still singing she is and yeah? she's 74 years old yeah you, you can you can you can find her on, on YouTube. Okay. You can. She doesn't look. She's seventy four, and we call her baby. Yeah. So she has to be baby, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna plug her on my site as well. Please, okay. Please. And you, if you if you hear some more of my albums, you can hear my little sister singing an oracle. She's incredible. Yes. Yeah, and she doesn't sing uh, blues and other albums. So she sings on mine, you know. Fantastic. The Ronettes. Oh, I used to love those. Yeah, they were good. Those singers. Yeah, the idiot, the first field spectrum, man. I'm so sorry for him. Yeah. He hit the world in his hands. I don't know what happened to him, you know? He, he just blew it. He the blew dro it. The yeah. drugs. The yeah. drugs. Drugs kill people. That's why one of the other reasons I didn't go to, with Alan. Right. Because Jimmy was saying he didn't get paid in cash, he got paid with drugs. Yeah, yeah. And though I don't do drugs, yeah. So what I was gonna do with drugs? Sell them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you wanna buy some of them? And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't smoke pot. I don't, I don't, I don't. No, you can't, you can't sell drugs in Mexico, man, because somebody will kill you. <laughs> Ah, they go, oh, you get killed. Get it, man. You don't mess with those guys. <laughs> no. Who wants to deal with drugs? I yeah, mean, exactly. No. Exactly. Drugs, drugs are for idiots. Yeah. There's always oh, tequila. Yeah. There's always tequila. <laughs> I love tequila, man. I just, I just found out that I love rum better mm -hmm. than tequila because rum, with some juice, some pineapple juice. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh man, it was so, you won't believe it. I put two bowls of vanilla ice, two of vanilla ice cream. Ooh. Yeah, and then some mango. Yes, I love mango. And then some rum. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds good and it tastes wonderful. Oh man. Yeah, and three of those, and you don't count me. You can count me out. Hey, maybe you can make your million selling their drink. <laughs> hey, maybe. You know, who can tell? Uh, you know, I, I just wish I could play my music for more people because the little places that I go, sure, you know, all of my friends go, all of them. I call them and the two of them are there always. You, you had a couple of gigs recently in California, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to come? Are you going to play again? Yeah, I, I'm playing 24th on uh, Downey, okay. uh, 30th on Vegas, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple, another one, but I can't remember. So I'm playing. Yeah, sure, I'm playing yeah. over there. Come to Florida. Come to Florida. Yeah, I went over there. I, I went over there, and I got a heart attack. Oh, I had a heart attack. Yeah. Uh, How come? Like an announcement for, like, <laughs> like I was. I, here comes a heart attack. Uh, yes. But it was just an announcement. It wasn't. Oh, okay. They brought me, they brought me back and pulled me full of pills. I sounded like a maraca man with mm. too much pills. 
Yeah, Carlos had a scare too. I mean, yeah, he had but, exhaustion, I guess. Uh, yeah, but he had he has his operation. Yeah, that's I, really. I am content. My body that hasn't lost a single inch of of of, of skin, <laughs> and I'm talking about all my body. So I am completely complete. Yeah. Nothing has been changed. No, you look great, dude. You look yeah, great, man. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, there were so many, though, famous Mexican Americans that made it in the 60s on rock and roll. You know, I mentioned El Chicano, Malo, of course, with Carlos's brother. Did you know Carlos's brother? Jorge was my friend. He was your friend? Him. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he just left us, no? I know. They made a big hit with Suavecito. Oh, yeah. 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 There was uh, well, Can Cannibal and the Headhunters, Sam the Sham, Sir Douglas Quintet, Question Mark and the Mysterians. There's a lot of bands. Oh, man. That guy was great. <laughs> I love that song, man. I know. The, the hit was great. Sam the Sham. I, I never, he was, even he turned to the religion. Did he? Ask him for, yeah, ask him for, for forgiveness. About singing "Wooly Bully." Oh man! But, but what? I mean, I never even got to know what "Wooly Bully" meant. <laughs> meant you know, he probably was speak, speaking about Trump's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Bolo? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so so you know, I don't. Yeah, all these Mexican guys. The only Mexican, I mean, other than Fito and Carlos, but the only Mexican that I really adore, man, is Richie Valens. Yeah, Richie Valens, yeah. Did you know him? Did you know Richie? I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't get to know him, but well, I haven't got to know a lot of people. Yeah. But, but, but Richie, I would really have wanted to play with him, you know, with his yeah. fellow. And uh, I used to straddle too. I just got, I just got from Fender. From the, can I say that? Yeah, of course. Oh well, the the factory, the the machine Fender. You know the the the, the owners of Fender Music. They sent me a nine thousand five hundred dollars guitar. That's called the newest, but they sent it in the newest. It's like a 1952 Fender. Wow. So they send it. They send it with brakes and nuts and, and okay. spreads, like it was old. Wow. But it's brand new, man. It is, oh, sounds great. Is it, and that's what I've been playing right now. Is it a Strat or a Tele or what, what kind? Of, a Strat. A Strat. Or a Strat. It's, it's a Strat. Yeah. A Strat. Yeah, a Strat. Carlos gave me 30, 30 years ago, man. Carlos gave me a Paul Reed Smith. Mm. And I went to Vegas and played, and an idiot, an idiot you know, one one of those uh, drunk idiots. Uh, I hit it like that, and he went and he just covered some kind of guitar. He got it and dropped it and broke one of my my things uh, pegs. Yeah. Uh, from, yeah. And so I took it, you know, I took it to a guitar shop. Uh, I gotta say the word the name. Uh, Oh, I don't. Uh, so I took it, and the idiot from the store called the police. They called the police because a Mexican ugly Mexican. Oh my gosh, that's stupid. Yeah, was carrying one of Carlos Santana's guitar. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's a whole thing, and they called Carlos to see if it was true right. that he had gave it to me. You know that he had get, give it, given it to me. Yeah. So I was really mad because, man, if I had stolen it or whatever and broke it, if I was a, a thief, I wouldn't have taken it to <laughs> <laughs> You know, my God, you really yeah. make me really mad, man. That's you know? ridiculous. Huh. But I, I still laugh about it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear, man. Turn, turn, out, turn out that the, Mexi the ugly Mexican wasn't such a needed like them were. Exactly. Yeah. Stupid. Very stupid. Yeah. 
You know, here's a couple of guys I've interviewed who, who I love. I want to see if you know these guys. Did you know Pat Vegas and Lolly from Redbone? You know, the band Redbone? No. What did they think? Well, Pat, well, you, you know, Pat and Lolly started out in California. They were kind of a duo. They're, uh, but they're Mexican, but they're also a, um, American Indian as well. So they brought in the band Redbone, they brought their heritage, you know, in, into that. And how about Trini Lopez? Did you know Trini? I brought him to Mexico, are you kidding? Yeah. I hit, a, I, sure, I hit a place called La Terraza Casino in Mexico. Right. The, the best nightclub in South Central in Mexico. South Central, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Latino America. I hate that Latino word, man. I hate it because I am not a Latino. I'm right. an Hispanic. I'm right. a Hispanic. They get know? mixed up all the time, don't they? Yeah. And Latino was was this, uh, the guy that made that made that uh, that <laughs> Latin lover, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am the Latin lover. No, 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 no Latino. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Hispanic. Uh, and so my my nightclub was the best in in, in in Latin America. And and I brought no, I brought Ray Charles, Little Richard, Anthony uh -huh. Lopez, Johnny Mathis, who's my idol. I love Johnny Mathis. Idol. He's, oh man, he sings. I hope he still does. But he was, when he came, he was a little bit like, oh, my soul and stuff. Yeah. And I brought, I brought uh, Brenda Lee. Wow. Brenda Lee. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Also on Christmas. My little sister, yeah. my, 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 my little sister adored Brenda Lee. So my little sister used to sing, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So she to meet Brenda Lee, and so I brought Brenda Lee to Terrassa Casino. Mm, very yeah. cool. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I paid, because, God, I need some money. <laughs> but I used to have sponsors. Right. Yeah. And so the sponsors paid for for Rich House, for, for Little Richard. I brought Little Richard three times to Mexico. Really? Three wow. times. He's yeah, a fun I, guy. I, He's I, a fun I, guy. Yeah. Oh, man, he used to see, I mean, when, gonna tell him, <laughs> you know, when, he, when he's saying that in, 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 on live, I will I will just there with me, uh, nothing could top that, man, you yeah. know. You know, Trini, he was supposed to have a documentary made about his life, you know, and then he dies from COVID, oh. you know. Oh, no. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. COVID got him. Such a, such a shame. Man. It is a shame, isn't there's it? Another, so there's another one on the uh, on the market right now. Uh, there's a viruela del mono. That means you get viruela on your ass or something. Oh, the monkey pox? Yeah. 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 The, yeah. yeah. We're not going to... What about being in the stupid rocket and blasting it off right here? Yeah. Start working on the need, the, the need, the, the yeah. needs of the people on Earth. I agree. Right? Right. And you know what? You NASA, who are they, man? They're drug dealers. Where do they get the money from the government? <laughs> <laughs> they, get, they get the money from the government. My hey. God. They're trying the to get some. Think. They're trying to get space weed. That's what it is, space weed. <laughs> you know the the rocket that the other guy from Virgin Records right. is building Elon. is to have is to have uh, three or four couples on, on space. Right. If the world if the if the world best, they can create and and, and they and they can. Uh, Get another planet to 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 build it again, you know. Right, right. And maybe they can build more rockets and go to the moon. Really stupid, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just a Mexican that don't know. 
you know, another another famous band you're, fa- you're well known for is the famous Finks. Oh, the famous Finks. The famous Finks. They were great. Because, you know, I adored James Brown. I, I even brought James Brown to Mexico, too. Yeah. Yes. And I played with him. And you know what I did? I got to tell you what I did. Okay. Because James Brown was coming to the Arena Mexico, you know, and, and we're going to put him there. That was going to play there. But I wanted the people to, to talk about me. Mm-hmm. And of course, James Brown, because he's so, he was so great. So what I did was shave off my hair and my eyebrows. Really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> that show was on Sunday. Okay. And it was great. It was packed, everything. James, of course, was with his band. That went. Mm-hmm. On Monday, the, the newspapers came out. No, they were talking about it was Javier Batis shaved his eyebrows and his hair. <laughs> so it worked, you know, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I, I'm sorry, it worked. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I recorded with Fito uh, in 68, 69, uh-huh. yep. in Hollywood. Uh, and I, I became famous, uh, friends. With with Clifford Solomon, who was the lead saxophone on Ray Charles, and I became really good friends with him, and he used to come to Mexico play with me in my little bar. It was poor, it was packed. Not many people was there. It was Woodstock for us, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so yeah, we had a, a lot of a lot of good times and good music. The music is with. It's what has kept me, yeah, of keeps, course. Me, keeps me going, man. Yeah, man. Me, yeah sooner or later, I'm going to become famous, man. <laughs> I, hope it's not, I hope it's not later. Hey, man, you are famous in our hearts, okay? Oh, man. <laughs> I recognize legendary talent, and you got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to mention the famous Finks, man. You guys did a lot of great covers. Memphis, you did uh, California Sun, Little Coffee Shop, Do I Diddy Diddy, Please Please Please, Walking the Dog. I mean, yeah. money, great version of money. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Well, you know what? I still play that song, but now I got three ladies singing with me, man. So that's good. But I want, you know, it's been such a long road. It is a long road. Yeah. It has been hard, but it has uh, had a lot of obstacles and shit. You know, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm still here, ready to go, whatever, wherever they take me, the music takes me. Uh, Ready to go, man. Ready, ready. I play my guitar. The, the, the students coming in right now. Oh, cool. How many students do yeah. you got coming in? Oh, I, I've seen, I see, right now I see only three. Okay. But it's, All right. It's, it's going to be seven. By right. seven, the place is packed, man. Thank I mean, here's, here's a question I ask everybody, okay? I, I get some very interesting answers. Okay. If you had a Feel Good Dreams wish, like the movie, um, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? From the past, I would really, really choose to play with Fito and Mike Bluefield. Oh, wow. Mike Bluefield, that's a good good answer. Mike Bluefield, Mike Bluefield is the best blues guitar that has come mm-hmm. out of the world, uh, he's such. He was so great. And from from right now, from like in the future, where I would like to play with. <laughs> with, <laughs> with 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 a girl that's winning all the all the Grammys and Emmys and stuff. That's very famous. Skinny with a beautiful face. Was that Taylor Swift? <laughs> yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. How about that? Yeah. That's interesting. I, I, no, well, you know what? Because I think that I would get her to sing right. at least a couple of blues, uh, blues numbers right. that we can write together. Okay. And then she can bring the angel that she brings dressed in white. Mm -hmm. She brings out an angel, which I think she copied from me because I bring out an angel for my song, yep. A Flight of the Angel. And I, I bring out this beautiful girl dressed in white with wings and stuff. And she comes out and she dances when I'm playing The Flight of an Angel. Have you heard that song? Oh, of course, it's, it's, it's on a, it's on a Sol Naciente album. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I play that and my, yeah. she's, she's, my angel comes out and, and dances. And then uh, uh, Taylor, she sings. He sings a song, and an angel like mine comes out. Where did she get that idea? Maybe from a friend of hers. Right. That friend saw it on, on my yeah. on my show. Because nobody does that. You know, if it came out there, maybe I get a chance to play with her. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll put my feelers out, man. <laughs> Javier, you know, when I let my hair go out, it looks like yours, you know, yeah, so in, in, in 10 years or so, I'm looking at myself. <laughs> again, this is a picture of you. It's awesome. That's me. When you're 78. That's me, man. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm 63 now, so. Two more years. You're, you're getting there. I know. I know. I know. This is like, I'm proud of my, proud of my white hair. Very it looks good, good, dude. Yeah, because you know it's there. It's yeah. not falling out. That's it's right. Been, yeah, it's you great. should be proud of that, man. Look, Perucito Carlos, Perucito Peter Frampton. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's touch the subject. <laughs> I bet he's touchy about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, the, the guys from Nam Show came, came in. Yeah. And, and uh, they interviewed, and they asked me a personal question about Carlos. And you know, Carlos and I were very close friends from when we started, right. and up to some some years. But then he became un until he get, he got the Grammys. You know, yeah. he changed. Yeah. Of course, you know, yeah, he changed. Yeah, yeah. He changed a lot. Yeah, but right now. We meet, you know, we get together and we we talk. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Javier. What can I tell him that, that my that my gas tank leaks? You know, <laughs> my, <laughs> and he can answer, yeah, my plane didn't take, it took off uh, last night to Guelders. I mean, he has he has a job and twenty Mercedes and yeah. planes and helicopters. Can't, can't. And, Nine million dollar house. Hey, I could use a hundred dollars. Yeah, can Carlos help you though? Can you know get recognized in the United States? If he wanted to, he could help me. I know. You know? He should. He has, he has all the all the money in the world. He should he help to me. help his friend. He don't know me. He don't owe me anything. You know. Uh, yeah. Still, people tell him, "Hey, tú le debes a Javier." No, he don't owe me. I don't. I don't say that he is, he owes me. Right. He he doesn't owe, owe me anything. Nobody does. Mm. The people that owe me, he's paying me. But I I had Cindy on the show. You know Cindy, his wife. No. Cindy. No, I had oh. her on the show. Yeah. That's her name. C Cindy Blackman Santana. Cindy Blackman. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 She's, she's a drummer. She plays in yeah. the band now. Yeah. Yeah. And she yeah. knows about me? I don't know. I'm not sure. You, you, I'm, you, didn't, you didn't ask her. I didn't ask her, no. <laughs> Next time I will. Yeah, that, I will ask her. That's, that's how it goes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell her to help you out. You know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. But in a way that they want to. He owes you. Uh, I think Carlos owes you. You know? Oh, no. I 
I do. I do. <laughs> I can say you know, that. God, God, and his help, help me and, and given me so much that I don't think what, what I could do with is some recordings right. and maybe some concerts on television. Right, right. I don't know it. But, you know, and maybe a couple of hundred. Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to promote you as much as I can, okay? Uh, I'm going to do my so thing. Much. I need that. I need help. That's what I need. You're a good guy. I'm you know? happy, happy, happy to know that I found a good friend. You're a good guy. Um, I'll do everything I can, man. You deserve it. You know? Thank you so much. I'm all about the music, Thank too, you. since I was a kid. So that's that's all I'm yeah. about. You know, uh, I'm like you, man. I'm Pedacito. I don't make any money. <laughs> Pedacito. Join the club. Join the club, right? Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Anyway, aye, aye. I'm going to promote live sessions because I love it. I'm going to put it on all my sites with, with where you can buy it. Um, I, I saw it's on uh, Discogs, D-I-S-C-O-G-S, www.discogs.com. You can buy it there. I have translate all your stuff into English, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm happy because I haven't been near translating anything. You know? Yeah, man. Well, you are, I, I, speak, I speak good English. You speak great English. I speak, You know why? I was born two blocks from here is the border, man. Yeah, that's right. So everything on television and the stores and everything is like American stuff here in, 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 in Tijuana, but it costs triple what it costs in the States. Man. Yeah. So, you know, I, yeah. I should be speaking Spanish fluent because I grew up with my mom, my abuelita, and my tias in the household speaking fluent Spanish, you know? My abuelita, that's my abuelita. <laughs> But you're on Reverb Nation. You're on Spotify. I'm going to post all these links. You're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you also got, I'm going to put the link to the USA Sessions, too, when you play oh, your show. Hey, that's a great record. That's a good record as well. Yeah, the I Catch Up With Me. Christopher Solomon is there. Christopher Solomon, uh, the guy that... Mr. Lee, yep. the, the guy that, that working with Mr. Lee, yep. you know, Lee Allen from Fifth Domino, uh, the I catch the, the, the Ray Collins from the Mothers of Invention. Wow. Of course, Fito de la Parra, Olaf yep. de la Barrera, and uh, Larry Taylor from Kent Heat are there with me too. Oh, also, album. Henry Bestin, sure. It's a great album. And, and I, you know what? I would like to, I would like to ask you, please, sure. tell the people, to turn on YouTube and, and search K-Girl, mm -hmm. the latest version from the 50 years of Abandaro. Okay. Uh, I recorded K-Girl, and you please listen to it, man. It's great. I'll put the link out there for everybody. I'm also going to put out your discography, all your albums. I'm listening to every one of your albums from uh, Thank you. 1963 on, okay, from the famous things on. Okay, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Hi. I gotta tell you, I recorded since 1959. That's right, 59. So I didn't see anything. Oh, wait a minute. You're right. Let's see. I'm looking now. I was looking for an album that? from 59. I, I, I did it when we recorded in 1959. I gotta right. tell you this. We recorded on a radio station, and the station had one of those machines that the records were made there and a little brush was was, was swiping away the thing that it right. the, the, yeah and so no no label no nothing the, the songs are there and we used to sell the, the <laughs> records for a dollar and we made 500 records so we made 500 dollars that's know? good you sold 500 records it's not bad yeah. and so I said yeah making records it's money, so <laughs> in, in 1960, RCA Victor from Los Angeles came and recorded me on a, on a, on a nightclub. It was called, uh, the nightclub was called, yeah, 
I remember that. <laughs> it was called, oh, I can't remember the name of the last cup. But the song was El Twist Espacio, Slow Twisted, and Mashed Potatoes. Uh, the one that, Mashed Potatoes. Yeah. Da, da, da. Oh. yeah, you know, the uh, Joey D. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? I just had Joey D on my show. <laughs> Joey, D, Joey D is great. Don't ask him anything about the recording. Uh, the recording things that over there the mafia has the recording stuff. And oh, yeah? They kill you and they kill you. I know, I know. Yeah, well, Joey D lives in Florida. In Florida, yeah, he's a good guy. Nice guy. Still, he's still, he, still looks good. He was so great, man. He yeah, was man. Great. I just want to tell you that you are incredible at blues, jazz. Incredible jazz players. Wait, well, rock and roll, uh, Latin rock. I mean, there's nothing you can't do. I, you can even throw progressive rock in there. You do it all. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you what I did. Uh, it's gonna be two months now. Right. Two months ago, two months ago, I recorded 14 songs. I'm gonna sing you the start of one of the songs. Okay. No me juzguen como vengo, lo bueno es que ya llegué, pero vengo borrachito por las copas que me eché. Ay, <laughs> 14 mariachi songs. Oh, man. I, I, I think I think there's gonna be a great album. Love it, love it. Well, send it to me when it, you know, or let me know that we're to get it. Okay. Of course, of course. Have you ever done uh, Beso me, Beso me mucho? Have you ever done that? <laughs> That's Latino, Latino as you can get. <laughs> you know, you know the funny, you know the funny version of that song. Beso me, beso me, culo. You must have heard that before. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've heard it so many times. Yeah. I just, I just, I just, I just didn't remember it. Oh, one of my my girlfriends in the beginning, she used to sing that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I obey. <laughs> you know, I think even the Beatles did that. They they played around with Beso Me Mucho, you know? Everybody loves that really? song. Yeah, they did. Yeah, the Beatles, man. They killed, I don't, I don't know if the people understand me, but Beatles, Beatles killed yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah, but they started with rock and roll, Chuck Berry, Little Richard. Right. That's where they got it from. Smokey, Smokey Robinson. Yeah, uh, Barrett Strong. They they used to do covers of the songs that were great in rock and roll. Right. But when they they got to the stage, rock and roll was forgotten. Yeah. And and, and all you could hear was yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, but 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 it, it's all it's all for the better, I think. Uh, uh -huh. Music has changed and changed. And it, has. it has. I don't like too much. I don't like too much the bad words on the on the, the yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It's not necessary, man. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Especially, you know, you know we've been talking. <laughs> we've been talking for an hour, and the only guy who has said a couple of bad words is me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, me too. I saw. I saw a couple. <laughs> Javier, I want to thank you so much, man. I know. I know you got to teach some people here, some guitar. Thank you, man, for being on the show today. Um, I'll put it all together and edit it correctly. I'll send. I'll send the link to uh, Claudia. Thank, thank her for me for you know yeah, the correspondence she's back and great. forth. She's incredible. Yeah. Um, great. I'm gonna so I'm gonna much. send you all the links to the interview. It'll be Spotify. It'll be everywhere. Pandora. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank man. you so much. So very much, very very much. Because I need guys like you, like you, to to back me up. Because I'm something worth backing up. You know. You're a living legend, man. 
I'm, I'm not the ugly Mexican. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're, you're gonna look. I'm gonna look like you. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's true, I'm the I'm the ugly Cuban. <laughs> Well, I, I know I look like animals on Sesame Street. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's, That's a, a good, good thing. thing, right? Yeah, kids love animal. <laughs> I know. That's great. You know what, man? I'm going to push, I'm going to mention that there should be a documentary about you, okay? Yes. I'm going to tell some people that they should make a documentary about your life because you had yes. a fantastic and very interesting life. Yes, I have. Has lived a life full of good things, good things, good things, bad things, good <laughs> things, good things, you know? And fantastic music. But I, Carlos taught, taught me that in order to be flowers, there has to be grass. Right. That's true. You know? Yeah. And so that's what happened to me. I'm a flower. <laughs> You know, not a beautiful flower, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flower and with a lot of grass. And I'm talking the green stuff, not, not the smoking stuff. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Javier. Thank I you so it, much. Man. God bless you. You Thank too. You so All the best to you and Claudia, okay? Thank you. Bye, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice meeting you. Nice, nice to meet you, you too. <laughs> Thank Bye-bye. you.